Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my live videos and on this video tonight I am going to be giving you a preview for the Norwich Manchester United game at Carroll Road Saturday half past five kickoff. It is the FA Cup quarter final. Also too a bit later on in this video I am going to be giving you my starting 11 prediction for the game. Now this is the sixth consecutive season that we have progressed to the FA Cup quarter finals. Um, as you already know, we've already beaten Norwich twice this season. You know, we're beating them 4-0 at Old Trafford and we're beating them 3-1 at Carroll Road. So we're looking to beat them, you know, for the third time. Um, in reality, you know, we should progress to the semi-finals of the FA Cup because Norwich have endured a very, very bad season. Uh, they are sitting bottom of the Premier League. I think they've lost 20 games in the Premier League this season. Uh, their recent defeat uh, was to Everton. Everton did win that game by one goal to nil. Uh, this is the first time Norwich um, have progressed to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup since na the 1991-1992 season. Uh, the last time we played Norwich in the FA Cup, it was in a fourth round tie. Back in the 93-94 season, I think we did beat them by two goals to nil. And we have won 10 of our last 12 away games against Norwich in all competitions. So, you know, we have got a very, very good record against them. If we can win this game against Norwich on Saturday, it will extend our unbeaten run to 14 in all competitions. Because as it stands at the moment, we are unbeaten in our last 13 games in all competitions. And that is our best vein of form since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the interim manager and all of that. Um, give you a bit of uh, team news now. Uh, give you a bit of Norwich's team news. I think you know Norwich have got um, a few injuries. Uh, they've got Zimmerman out. He's out with injury. They've also got Grant Hanley out as well with injury. And I think also too Sam Byron is out for Norwich. I think the only injuries we've got at the moment is Phil Jones and Alex Tuanzebe. But apart from that, you know, we have got a, uh, you know, we've got most players fit. So, yeah, so Solskjaer, you know, is going head to head, you know, with Daniel Fark. Uh, Daniel Fark is Norwich City's manager. Um, obviously, you know, Norwich is the third club in his managerial career. Uh, because obviously, you know, before he was at Norwich, I think he was at Borussia Dortmund. Um, and he was at another team before Borussia Dortmund as well, but I can't remember, you know, which team it was. So he's actually, you know, German is Daniel Fark, you know. So, um, yeah, um, I probably think, you know, Norwich is, well, one of Norwich's best players is Todd Campwell. Uh, Timu Puke, you know, he's also quite good for Norwich. I think we inquired about his availability on a deadline day in January. They've also got Ben Godfrey, as well, you know, he isn't a bad player for Norwich, but we do know that they are going into the championship and all of that. But yeah, I'm very, very convinced, you know, that we can win this game against Norwich. Um, of course, in the previous round, didn't we beat Tranmere by six goals to nil? Uh, of course, you know, we did beat Wolves in the third round, you know, by one goal to nil. Uh, did we beat someone else, if I can remember rightly, as well? But, you know, I think we've got a great chance of winning the FA Cup. And like I said, Tino, the FA Cup is a priority for us. And so too is the Europa League. Because that's a chance for, you know, winning two trophies under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And don't forget as well, you know, the top four is a priority for us. So like I mentioned on my recent video, you know, if we can win the FA Cup, if we can win the Europa League and we can get the top four, that would be a fantastic achievement for Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And it would be a memorable first full season for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, because this has been his first full season at the football club. Like I mentioned earlier on, uh, you know, there's a chance, you know, we could get third place. Leicester are sitting third at the moment, but I think we're like six points behind Leicester and that. But we need top four this season because, of course, once to get qualification for the Champions League for next season. If we can win the FA Cup, we will go level with Arsenal. I think we've won, uh, is it 12 FA Cups at the moment? Uh, Arsenal, I think, have won 13. So we are the most, we are the second most successful team in the FA Cup. So let's just put that into the equation. 
But Solskjaer, I know, is definitely not going to make several changes from the 3-0 win against Sheffield United. Uh, you saw my match reaction after that game. Um, I thought we played very, very well against Sheffield United uh, yesterday night. Uh, you know, passed the ball well, pressed well, had some very, very good chances in the game. Our football, you know, was very, very expansive. You know, there was one touch, two touch. So it was just very, very good to see. Of course, Anthony Martial um, had scored an hat-trick for us. That was his first senior hat-trick for Manchester United. And he became the first player to score a hat-trick for us since Robin Van Persie back in 2012, or was it 2013 and all of that. You know, Martial, of course, had been given the man of the match. Uh, Rashford, you know, he got two assists and obviously Al wan got an assist. Rashford also had a really, really good game. You know, Rashford was unlucky not to get his name on the score sheet against Sheffield United because, you know, Rashford had, like, two fantastic chances. I think he missed two sitters, did Marcus Rashford. Like I said, Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba uh, were majestic in our midfield. And, you know, they combined with each other, you know, really, really well, the Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba. And I think that is the best midfield partnership in the Premier League. I think yesterday as well, like I mentioned, Solskjaer made the right decision by playing Mason Greenwood. You know, he really, really did. Because Greenwood, you know, had a really, really good game as well. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, Lindelof and Maguire did really, really well at the back yesterday um, night. You know, Lindelof, you know, was good on one-on-one -on -one situations. Um, you know, he made some very, very um, important clearances as well, you know, did Victor Lindelof. And Maguire, you know, he dealt with a lot of long balls. So I was very, very impressed with Harry Maguire. Uh, Luke Shaw also had a good game. You know, Pesak had a you know, good game as well. David De Gea had basically nothing to do in the game yesterday night. I think Sheffield United only had one shot on target the whole game. So that just proves how dominant we were. Just proves how dominant we were. And we was very, you know, we showed a lot of fluid, didn't we, in that attackive line. You know, we really, really did. Solskjaer did make, obviously, a few changes from the 1-1 draw with Tottenham, you know, last Friday and all of that. But, you know, we have uh, really, really improved, you know, to be quite honest with you. But that was a really, really good win against Sheffield United because we knew it wasn't going to be an easy game. Uh, obviously, you know, Sheffield United, since the football season resumed, you know, haven't been so good. You know, now, obviously, you know, they're winless since the season resumed and they haven't even scored one goal. But analysing it overall, I think Sheffield United have enjoyed an exceptional season because no one expected Sheffield United to be in the position that they're in. Um, you know, and so they've definitely not exceeded expectations and that. And, you know, Chris Wilder has done a very, very good job with them. But the game yesterday night was totally contrast to the reverse fixture against Sheffield United because the game at Bramall Lane was 3-3. And obviously, you know, we came back from 2-0 down. You know, we scored three times within, like, seven minutes and all of that. But, yeah, you know, we're only now two points behind Chelsea. Uh, so, if Man City can get something off Chelsea, you know, that obviously, you know, is very, very beneficial, you know, from our perspective and that. There's still a few teams in that top four race and that. So, anyway, um, like I said, Solskjaer's going to make changes. Um, I can see in this game against Norwich, you know, Solskjaer starting Eric Bay. I can also see... Uh, Mason Greenwood uh, starting again. I can also see Paul Pobber starting again. Bruno Fernandes, I think, is going to be dropped in this game against Norwich. I can see Sergio Mario starting in goal because, like I said, you know, he plays in the cup games as Sergio Mario. I can see Brandon Williams starting at left back. Um, I can also possibly see Odi Nigalo starting up front as well. So Martial could be dropped for this game against Norwich. I could, we could also see, you know, the low starting at right back. Um, the low starting at right back, you know, maybe Pereira could be involved as well. Matter, you know, he could be also starting the game, so he is going to make several changes. Is Solskjaer. So let's get on now with the starting eleven prediction. Um, not too short formation he'll go with, to be quite honest with you, because Solskjaer has been changing formation persistently this season. You know, a lot he has gone with a four-two-three-one. A few times he has gone. Uh, with a 4-3-3, a few times he has gone with a 3-4-1-2, um, a few times he's gone with the 5-3-2, I think he went with a 5-3-2 against, you know, Chelsea and Manchester City, you know, did um, uh, Molly Gunnar Solskjaer and all of that, but yeah, he, he'll make a lot of changes in that, 
Uh, by the way, the last time Norwich beat us uh, was back in 2012. That's eight years ago now, the last time they beat us. I think they did beat us 1-0, wasn't it? Holt, that had scored the only goal of the game. Uh, that's last time they beat us, I think, at Carroll Road. Um, of course, you know, they beat us at Old Trafford 2-1 back under the Louis van Gaal era and that. But, you know, we usually do beat Norwich. There's been a lot of 4-0s uh, between Manchester United and Norwich, you know, in recent years as well. So, um, there you go. So, we'll get on with the prediction now. So, I think we're going to go with Sergio Romero in goal. Sergio Romero in goal. Diego Delors at right back. Uh, Diego Delors does need some minutes under his belt. I think Delors only played a good... He's only played 67 minutes, I think, throughout the course of this season. But Diego Delors has had, you know, quite a few injuries. This is, you know, why he's hardly played. But he is our backup to Anwan Misaka. I think Delors being with us now a good 18 months or longer than 18 months. We got Delors in Jose Mourinho's final transfer window. You know, we did pay £19 million, was it, for Delors. And he has got a contract with us until 2023. You know, we did get him from Porto, by the way. But still very, very young. But Bissaka uh, won't start this game, I don't think. Um, we'll go with Bay. I think we'll put Bay alongside Harry Maguire in our back line. I know Lindelof um, ahead of Eric Bay, but Lindelof I think will be dropped in this game. He's going to obviously you know rest some players you know for the game against Brighton because that's obviously you know our next league match. You know, Bay you now thinks a very very good centre half. Uh, my only element of concern about Eric Bay is that you know he is injury prone and all of that. You know, Bay he's now into his fourth season at Manchester United again. We got him under the Jose Mourinho era. We paid £30 million for Eric Bay. And he was actually, you know, the first signing that Jose Mourinho made. Yeah, Maguire alongside him. Maguire's um, enjoyed an exceptional season for us. It's been his first season at Manchester United. You know, we did pay £80 million for him last summer from Leicester. So he's the second most expensive sign at the club. And he is the most expensive, you know, centre half in the world. Left back, Brandon Williams. Um, I know Luke Shaw is our first choice left back, and he will be our first choice left back for the remainder of this season. But I think Williams, you know, will play in this game because Williams hasn't played, I don't think, in uh, the two previous games since the season resumed. So he needs some minutes under his uh, belt. I think in that midfield, we are going to go with Paul Popper and Scott McTominway. Um, may, maybe some people would say it would be, you know, the right decision to drop Paul Pogba in this game, but we can't drop him because, you know, he still needs to get more minutes under his belt. Uh, don't forget, you know, Paul Pogba was out with injury for a while. Like I said, you know, he was very, very infectious against uh, Sheffield yesterday night was um, Paul Pogba. And that obviously, you know, that was his first start for the football club, you know, since September you know, Paul Pogba's. He didn't uh, start in the Tottenham game, but obviously, you know, he came on as a substitute and made a fantastic impact. So, yeah. Yeah, McTomway, you know, will be alongside him, I think. Um, I think McTomway has enjoyed an exceptional season at Manchester United. I really, really do. Uh, I think in the last year or so, you know, McTomway has developed into a world-class midfielder. And, you know, he's really, really improving. Don't forget, we've got the good news uh, regarding McTomway recently uh, that he had signed a five-year contract at Manchester United. So he's going to be here until 2025. There's also an option of a further year as well. You know, mctomway has been here since 2012. He made his senior debut for us in 2017. And that was um, against Arsenal. And he's gone on since then to make around 76 appearances. But some people say on their starting level prediction, you know, it could be Fred alongside Paul Pobino, or could possibly, you know, be Matic alongside Paul Pobino, who knows. But I think it'll be McTomway alongside Pogba. Then the three attacking, attacking mids. I think uh, we'll put Jesse Lingard in the number 10. Um, I know obviously, you know, Jesse Lingard is probably the worst Manchester United player. But maybe, you know, he'll just get some minutes under his belt because it is the FA Cup. Uh, Jesse Lingard's found game time very, very difficult, you know, since Bruno Fernandes came in. But there again, you know, we could put Pereira in that number 10, you know, but I am going to go with Jesse Lingard and all of that, you know. Um, um, on the left-hand side, 
I'm going to go with Mason Greenwood. Yeah, put him on the left-hand side, or you could even put Greenwood on the right, but I'd say put Greenwood on the left-hand side. Um, I think Greenwood, you know, has enjoyed an exceptional season for Man United. This has been his first full season in the senior squad, of course. But yeah, he's going to get more starts now, I think, for the remainder of this season. Uh, one matter on the right-hand side. Uh, I think we need to give one matter a start. Um, he's a good player, he's one matter, you know. This has been now his sixth season at Manchester United as one matters. Uh, we got him in 2014 from Chelsea, you know. We paid, was it, £40 million or just under £40 million pounds for him, um, of course. And up top, I think we are going to go with Odin Agarlo. Um, Of course, um, like I said, Agarlo's starts will now be limited um, in the Premier League, obviously, you know, because Marcus Rashford is back from his back injury. Uh, don't forget, confirmed uh, a couple of weeks ago now that Odi Nogalo's loan had been extended at the football club for a further seven months. So that keeps him on loan at Manchester United until the end of January 2021. With no obligation to buy a Galo, there's no option to buy him. So at the end of the loan, I think he'll go back to Shanghai Shenu. So that is my starting 11 prediction for this game. So I think Rashford won't start. Uh, Martial won't start. Shaw, I think he'll be dropped. Lindelof, he'll be dropped. Pesaka, he'll be dropped. Uh, Matic, I don't think will start. Um, I don't think Fred will start either. I really, really don't. Bruno Fernandes also, you know, he will be dropped as well. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, you know, like I said, you know, he's enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. I think Bruno Fernandes has now got, is it, four goals and four assists for the football club. I think in nearly every Premier League match, apart from the odd one or two, he's been given the man of the match. And he won Premier League Player of the Month for February, reflecting on his good run of performance, as you know, did Bruno Fernandes. But he's definitely made a difference in the team. You know, we got Bruno Fernandes in a deal worth around £65 million, you know, in January. And Bruno Fernandes did sign a five-and-a-half-year deal with us, but... Definitely is the foreseeable future for Manchester United and all of that. Uh, Daniel James, I don't think you know he'll start this game against Norwich either. Um, as you all know, he was dropped to the Sheffield United game yesterday, you know, but came on. I think Daniel James has enjoyed a very, very good season. I really, really do. But I just feel as though he needs a bit more of a rest because, you know, Solskjaer has been overplaying Daniel James. You know, of course, we got Daniel James last summer from Swansea. You know, we paid around £15 million pounds for him. So he was a cheap solution, you know. Daniel James can play on the left and he can also play on the right. But he's actually no more effective, you know, from that left-hand side. But the vast majority of this season, we've put, been putting him on that right-hand side and all of that. So he is, you know, going to make a lot of changes in that. But we must win this game against Norwich, you know. We must win this game because, you know, we want to keep um, our impressive run going. You know, want to get to the semi-finals of the FA Cup. You know, we just basically, you know, want to win the FA Cup and all of that. So, yeah, Solskjaer's looking to beat Daniel Fark um, for the third time as a manager because he's already overcoming twice already this season. You know, he really, really hasn't that. Um, like I said, you know, Norwich uh, beat Tottenham in the previous round. So that's obviously, you know, how they progressed to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup and all of that. So that is your preview. And plus that is your starting 11 prediction for the game. Um, like I said to you, uh, Solskjaer has got big decisions to make at Manchester United. Uh, like I said, Solskjaer's got big decisions to make in the summer. Chance for Wendy, you know, of what plays he's going to recommend in. And, you know, what players, you know, he is going to get rid of and that. Solskjaer did say he's looking to make around three or four major signings at the end of the season because he believes we need this, you know, to become title contenders next season. Because I did say, didn't I, next season our expectations will be to challenge for the title. It will be to challenge for the title. I said on my recent video, that's just uploaded, by the way, uh, I said I think we're around three maybe four signings away from the title. You know, this is, you know, what I do believe. Um, but Solskjaer's actually, you know, convinced, you know, that we will get Champions League qualification anyway for next season. Um, we got, By the way, we're going to get rid of at least five players in the summer transfer window. We're going to get rid of at least five players, aren't we? And I think 
We're going, going to try and get rid of Phil Jones. We're also going to try and get rid of Smalling and Rojo on permanent transfers. Uh, of course, you know, we are going to try and get rid of Jesse Lingard and Andres Pereira. You know... But yeah, so we're going to get rid of at least five players in the summer transfer window. So we are going to generate money that way. We are going to generate money that way and all of that. Uh, you already know the news regarding Alexis Sanchez. Uh, I recently you know, give you the news on him. Um, but yeah, I was hearing stories the other week saying that Solskjaer is going to be given around £269 million to spend in the summer transfer window. Was it 270 So he did say our transfer budget had been revealed. And if that is the case, you know, that should be enough for us, you know, to get the right number of players in, to get the right number of players in. Don't forget Ole Gunnar Solskjaer gave us an update on our transfer plans and he did say that, you know, we need to spend money to compete with the likes of Manchester City and Liverpool. But he says, you know, we will do business if players are available for the right price. So what he means in that aspect is that, what he means in that aspect is, uh, you know, we may not be spending big on players or making any Galactico signings, etc, etc, and all of that. But, you know, we will see what happens. But, you know, the summer transfer window is Solskjaer's second summer transfer window as Manchester United manager because he's already overseen one summer transfer window. But in total, it will be his fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager and all of that. But, you know, I do trust him, you know, I really, really do. Uh, like I said, um, other decisions he's got to make. Uh, like I said, he's got um, a goalkeeper deci goalkeeping decision to make. You know, he's got to decide on what he's doing with David De Gea and Dean Henderson. Uh, Solskjaer, I know, was recently talking about that, and he did say that um, Dean Henderson is not yet ready to become Man United's number one goalkeeper. But he did say, uh, did Solskjaer, that Dean Henderson will be England's number one and Manchester United's number one goalkeeper in the future. So, reflects on this, you know, Dean Henson could go out on loan for another season. And that We know he's going to be staying at Sheffield United for the remainder of this season. This has been Dean Henson's second season on loan with Sheffield United, and I've got to make an admission, he has been Sheffield United's player of the season. He's done really, really well. Didn't play against us yesterday, of course, due to personal reasons and that. Um, Dean Henderson's had quite a few loan spells though, you know, he had one with Stockport, Grimsbury, Stockport, Grimsbury, Shrewsbury Town, we got Dean Henderson as a 14 year old, uh, we did get him from Carlisle back in 2011, uh, so we got him as a 14 year old and that, but we won't get rid of him permanently because we see him as a long term replacement for David De Gea, uh, Solskjaer I know, did recently say that he set a deadline and he's going to give David De Gea 12 months to rescue his Manchester United career. Uh, because Solskjaer's actually you no know, defended, you know, David De Gea, because don't forget in the game last Friday against Tottenham, uh, you had Roy Keane criticising David De Gea, and, you know, Solskjaer would come out and defended him and that. Uh, like I said, you know, David De Gea's been a long servant at Manchester United, like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was recently saying. I think, analysing it, David De Gea's had a good seven years out of the nine years he's been here. In the last couple of years, he has made a lot of mistakes in that. But prior to that, still regarded as one of the best goalkeepers in the world. And David De Gea is now approaching his 10th year at Manchester United. You know, he really, really is in that. But like I said, you know, he's it's good, you know, what he's achieved at the club because he has won everything here domestically. He's also, you know, won uh, individual awards. He's nearly made 400 appearances for us in all competitions and all of that as David De Gea. So I did say recently, you know, that his transfer is inevitable, is, you know, David De Gea's. But he will remain our number one for the remainder of this season. Like I said, Solskjaer's got a bit of a decision to make at left-back as well. Um, Luke Shaw's obviously our first-choice left-back, but maybe next season, you know, Williams could become our first-choice left-back, you know, when he does gain, you know, more experience. But there again, if we're... Go with three at the back, you know, then we can play Luke Shaw at centre-half because Luke Shaw's played at centre-half quite a few times. You know, we can put Brandon Williams as the left wing back. So, um, there you go. Um, we've also got to make a decision on Angel Gomez as well. Uh, don't forget, his current contract expires on the 30th of June. And, you know, we are 
like four days away now from the 30th of June. So we've got to hurry up and make a decision on his future. Solskjaer did say in the press conference prior to the Sheffield United game that there's no update on Angel Gomez's contractual situation. I think the last time I read up about Angel Gomez, it said that we'd offered him a new contract with £30,000 a week. But, you know, there again, we've put forward quite a few contract offers for Angel Gomez, but he hasn't accepted any of these contract offers. You know, I think he's got an um, element of concerns about getting into the first team because he's only made six first team appearances this season and that. But there's, you know, there's obviously, you know, still players at the club, you know, now that I find in game time hard, you know, Delors found game time hard, like I mentioned, Angel Gomez, yeah. Uh, to Heath Chong, you know, he's also found game time very, very hard as well. I know he got his contract extended not too long ago, but still finding game time hard. You know, Heath Chong could maybe play a part in this game as well. Uh, James Garner, you know, he's also found game time, you know, very, very difficult. You know, so there's quite a few players in the squad that are finding game time hard. Andres Pereira, you know, Jesse Lingard and all of that. But um, there you go. So, yeah, Solskjaer's got big decisions to make at Manchester United. But, like I said, you know, we've got the easiest running in the Premier League. We've got seven games remaining now. And in reality, we should win at least six of our, you know, seven remaining games. So, yeah, you know, so we should, you know, finish the season on the high. I think, you know, the only difficult game we've got is the Leicester game on, you know, the final day of the season. you know, on the uh, final day of the season and all of that. But, yeah. But, like I said to you, you know, Solskjaer's been at the football club for 18 months, so he has been here a year and a half. Like I said, you know, I've taken positives, you know, from his tenure. You know, like I said, he's brought five good players in so far, spent over £200 million. Um, Also, you know... When he first came in, Solskjaer, you know, he did say everybody would get their chances to express themselves, you know, which he has done. Uh, the young players have been given their chances this season, so he has, you know, promoted the youth very, very well. I think we've had the youngest squad um, in the Premier League this season. Um, also, too, you know, in this 13-game unbeaten run, you know, he has made a lot of good decisions and all of that. Um, you know... Like I said, our record against the big six sides this season has been good. You know, we've taken 18 points against the big six sides this season. And, you know, just overall, our football, you know, has really, really improved. Uh, 19 players have left Manchester United since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer came in. I heard another nine players are going to get released as well. Uh, so that's going to be, obviously, you know, more players departing the football club, you know. Just wait there a second. That's going to be, you know, more players, you know, departing the football club and all of that. But to be fair, Solskjaer, you know, has got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he came in to Manchester United and that. But uh, Solskjaer, you know, knows that he's got the backing of Ed Woodward and he's also got the backing of the Glazers because Woodward said on quite a few occasions this season he's willing to back Solskjaer. You know, the Glazers have also said it as well. I don't know still if Solskjaer is the foreseeable future for Manchester United, but I certainly know would give him at least another season at the football club and give him at least a couple of more transfer windows because at the end of the day, it is a transition period and it has been a transition period for quite some time. And let's put into the equation, you know, the vast majority of this team is not Solskjaer's. The vast majority of these players are Jose Mourinho's. Because, you know, Jose Mourinho recommended 11 players into Man United. And there's only a few players that have left who Jose Mourinho brought in and that. So that you can also put that into the equation as well. But I do want things to work out under Solskjaer. I really, really do. Because he was a great player for the football club for 11 years. He flourished um, under Alex Ferguson's guidance and that. Some United fans don't think he's still the right man, even though we've improved. You know, some United fans think, you know, we need a manager in, you know at the top level, you know, and a manager with a proven pedigree in that. I think Solskjaer's got two years left on his contract, or just under two years left on his current contract, but when he got the job permanently in March last year, 
Wow. Don't know what that was going on. Um, you know, you got John Perton last year, he signed um, a free year contract at Manchester United and all of that. But like I said, Tino, you know, Solskjaer was very, very close to getting the sack. But I've already outlined the reasons, you know, why he didn't get sacked from Manchester United. As you all know, our net debt is just over £429 million. Um, Obviously, you know, our debt had risen up by almost £130 million. And don't forget, you know, the coronavirus pandemic uh, cost us around £28 million. So let's just put that into the equation and all of that. Uh, but like I said, um, hopefully we can challenge for the title next season. Uh, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013 and that. Um, and like I said, you know, we have been playing catch-up for the last seven years. You know, in the last seven years, we've had different managers with different philosophies. Uh, we've recruited over 30-odd players in since the Alex Ferguson era. We spent close to the billion pound range on players, so in reality, you know, we should be where Liverpool are. Uh, we've also got players on big contracts at the football club, but I think we've made mistakes as well in the last seven years. You know, like some of the decisions we've made haven't been correct. You know, a lot of players we've brought in over the years haven't been the right calibre players for Manchester United. Uh, maybe there's some players as well who we have brought in who we should have kept, you know, so we'll also put that into the equation now. But there's been cultural problems at the club for a long time. You know, there's been problems with Ed Woodward and the Glazers, you know, for a long time. There's been problems with the board as well for a long time, you know. So let's just put that also into the equation. Into the equation now. So not all of the blame for the vast majority of this season has stemmed from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He's accountable for some of it, but, you know, um, not all of it and that. Um, you know our transfer tags as well. You know, Jade and Sancho are still on our agenda. Um, of course... If we sign Sancho, he'd probably be the only signing we make because Dortmund have said now they want £117 million. You know, Jack Grealish, he's another one of our priority targets. We're looking to get him on the looking to get him on the board. Uh, we was in for Bellingham, but obviously, you know, Jude Bellingham is going to Birmingham. Um, I think we are still in search for a striker, even though Rashford's back and a Gallo extended his loan, we're still in search for a striker in that. Uh, Kane, don't think he'll come to Manchester United. There was talks about it back in March, but I, I knew there wasn't, you know, a lot of uh, trustworthy in that. I knew that and that. So, anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Uh, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very soon.